Hello, my name's Rachel and I work for Step 2 Young People's Health. This video is about hentai. Hentai is anime and manga pornography, so they are pornographic cartoons. The original term actually means an abnormal sexual desire or act. It can exist in artwork, in video games, there are specialist magazines, specialist videos, DVDs, etc. It's been heavily influenced by Japanese cultural and historical attitudes towards sexuality. We're going to come on to Japanese laws surrounding it in a moment. But obviously different cultures, different countries have different views of things. They have different attitudes towards things and their history is very different as well. And there are lots of different subgenres which depict various kinds of relationships, sexual acts and also fetishes. So Japanese law actually forbids the publication of obscene material, but what they consider obscene material might be very different to what it's considered in another country. The images of male and female intercourse and images showing pubic hair are seen as obscene. So you will not see pubic hair in any of the hentai pornographic works, which is obviously quite unrealistic. Anime and manga have not always been covered by the bans and laws in Japan, which is why they're able to get away with some of the other things that is not seen in the traditional kind of pornographic films that people might be expecting, where you've got actual real life actors. In Japan, it is acceptable to show images of children in hentai. So they have laws against using children in real life pornographic scenes but it's perfectly acceptable to show children in sexual acts in these cartoons. OK, so I'll talk a little bit about the categories in the interest of not offending every single Japanese person on the planet with my terrible pronunciation. I've numbered them, so I will go through them by number. Number one. That is any, I'm going to call them cartoons just for ease. So that is any of the cartoons that show male homosexuality. Number two, female homosexuality. Number three, these ones are centred on, so the main characters, a prepubescent, pubescent or postpubescent underage girls. So that is any girl under the age of consent and prepubescent is anything from being born okay so this is specifically children this is children in pornographic pornographic acts being shown on the screen number four is the same but boys now for three or four these acts could be heterosexual or they could be homosexual but the fact is they center around children Number five, that is a, um, a genre that focuses on the depiction of women with large breasts. Women with big boobs is basically the focus of this one. It literally translates to exploding breasts. Okay? They don't show them actually exploding, but it means sort of popping out of your top, popping out of your bra or just naked, very large breasts. Number six, cat girl, as you might expect, it is human females, but with cat characteristics. So they might be given cat ears, a cat tail, they might be given whiskers. Remember, these are animations, so it's not a person dressing up. OK, but in the animation, it would show these uh, girls, these women with cat like features. Number seven, these are depictions of women that have both sets of genitalia. So they might have a penis and a scrotum. They might just have the penis and um, it might be an enlarged clitoris. So it appears as though it's a penis, but they also have a vulva or a vagina. Number eight, incest. That is any sexual activity with a family member. Number nine, 
that's cheating or being unfaithful to a significant other. So it shows people having an affair or it is meant to show people having an affair. Number 10 is a form of um, play with urine, basically. So in the UK, you might have heard of the term golden shower, where somebody wheezes on somebody else for sexual gratification. For this, it is forced holding in of urine um, and sexually pleasuring somebody, making others hold urine in and getting any kind of sexual gratification from that, or watching people hold urine in. Number 11, the tentacle erotica. This came around as a way to subvert some of the laws around Japanese pornography. And it is literally depictions of tentacled creatures. So if you think of like an octopus, okay, so that kind of creature or a monster, it could be fictional or it could be real. And they are engaging in sex or rape with girls. So the girls are being raped by a tentacle. The last one, number 12, doesn't necessarily mean attacking your daughter. They are depictions of uh, trans women or of men who appear to be quite stereotypically feminine. And they are taking the lead role and they are in some kind of dominance over their partner. So the, the daughter attack bit refers to the fact that it's a woman, a, a woman, sorry, that is doing it. Um, some of these, all of these are OK in Japan. Some of these are completely illegal in the UK. So I'll just go back to number three. That's the prepubescent, um, sorry, number three and number four. That's the prepubescent girls and boys. So showing children that's completely illegal in the UK. Uh, incest, number eight, it is completely illegal to have pornography that depicts incest in the UK. Uh, the water sports one, as it's known, so that's number 10. Again, that is illegal pornography in the UK. You cannot depict any kind of water sports or urinating on somebody. Um, tentacle erotica would be um, illegal in the UK because it shows these things engaging in sex or rape and it's the rape bit that's the problem um so you cannot in uk pornography show any kind of uh, situation that implies somebody is being raped so you can see just from those and the the explanations of them that uk pornography is very very different to uh, japanese produced pornography some of these completely illegal in the UK. Some of them, you might well be sitting there thinking, well, who's going to be interested in that? Why would somebody be interested in that? But you've got to remember that we're all from very, very different backgrounds. And, you know, what seems normal to one person could seem completely abnormal to another and vice versa. OK, so there are some um, support services here on this slide. We are Step 2 Young People's Health. Please feel free to follow us on any of our social media channels. We also have quite a number of videos on this YouTube channel now. So feel free to have a good dig around. If you are concerned about your usage of pornography or about anything, really, feel free to contact Childline and they can signpost you. Uh, the NHS is a good one for if you think your usage has become problematic, they may be able to signpost you to some help for that. Brooke, if you're here as a professional, has some fantastic information about pornography and some teaching resources. And at Step 2, we work in partnership with James and Hale to deliver relationships and sex education across the Bradford district. If you're watching this and you're not from Bradford, but you still need a little bit of help with signposting, that's absolutely fine. Get in touch, drop us a message on one of the social medias and we'll see what we can do for you.